Welcome to Policy Wire. I'm Dayan Rahmani, and today we'll be discussing an important issue. The Indus Delta, once a thriving ecosystem, is now rapidly receding due to increasing sea intrusion. The rising seawater is encroaching upon fertile land, displacing communities, and degrading the environment. The real question is, what is causing this? While some mistakenly uh, blame the extensive canal system, the actual reason is the lack of adequate large storage dams to regulate water flow throughout the year. Without these reservoirs, Pakistan's water resources remain unregulated, leading to extreme seasonal variations that allow seawater to push inland and damage the delta. To understand the gravity of the issue, it is important to look at how Pakistan's water system functions. The Indus River is the country's lifeline, supplying water to over 220 million people and sustaining 90% of Pakistan's agricultural needs. Without canals in the Indus River system, agriculture in Pakistan would be restricted to the footplains of the rivers, leaving vast areas of farmland barren. This would severely impact food security and economic stability. Eliminating canals is not an option, as they are crucial in distributing water nationwide. However, while the canal system helps deliver water to farms, it does not solve the problem of ensuring a steady flow of water to the Indus Delta throughout the year. The most significant threat to the Delta is the irregular flow of water. Statistics show that more than 80% of Pakistan's annual river water, approximately 125 million acre feet, flows into the Arabian Sea within two to three months during the monsoon season. The rest of the year experiences inconsistent and insufficient flows, which allow seawater to intrude into the delta. This intrusion is already causing severe damage. Nearly 2.7 million acres of fertile land in Sindh have been lost to salinity and several coastal communities have been forced to migrate inland as their homes and livelihoods are washed away. According to a study conducted by international water experts, a steady flow of at least 5,000 cubic feet per second is required downstream of Kotri Barrage throughout the dry months to prevent sea intrusion. The study calculated that minimum cumulative flow needed to maintain the delta's health, including monsoon floods and the steady off-season flow, is 8.6 MAF per year. This requirement was recognized earlier in Pakistan's Water Apportionment Accord 1991, which allocated 10 MAFs annually to ensure ecological balance. However, achieving these steady flows remains impossible without adequate water storage infrastructure. The only viable and long-term solution to this crisis is the construction of additional large storage dams. These dams would capture the excess monsoon water and gradually release it throughout the year, ensuring a consistent downstream flow to check sea intrusion. Pakistan's total water storage capacity currently stands at approximately 13.7 MAF, which is barely enough to sustain the country for 30 days. In contrast, countries like India and Egypt have water storage capacities of 170 days and 700 days, respectively. Pakistan desperately needs more reservoirs to secure its water supply and protect the Indus Delta. Despite the necessity for additional storage, progress on large dams has been slow due to political disagreements. Some politicians, particularly in Sindh, strongly decry the sea intrusion problem yet oppose the solution that could prevent it. This contradiction has stalled crucial water infrastructure projects. The controversial Kalabagh Dam is often discussed, but Pakistan has other viable options even if it remains politically unfeasible. The ongoing construction of the Amir Basha Dam with a capacity of 8.1 MAF and Mohammed Dam with a capacity of 0.67 MAF are positive steps, but more such projects are needed. Other potential sites 
for large reservoirs should be explored to address Pakistan's growing water crisis. It is also important to recognize that sea intrusion is not just an environmental concern, it also has severe economic consequences. Since coastal economy heavily depends on agriculture and fisheries, suffering from increasing salinity and the destruction of freshwater ecosystems. The once thriving delta, which supported a large fishing community, has seen a drastic decline in fish stocks, directly impacting over 1.5 million people whose livelihoods depend on fishing. In addition, the loss of fertile land is pushing farmers out of business, worsening food insecurity in the region. If urgent action is not taken, these economic hardships will only intensify. Pakistan can secure its future by investing in water storage infrastructure. The construction of more dams will regulate water flow, curb sea intrusion and boost hydroelectric power generation, reducing reliance on expensive fossil fuels. Currently, Pakistan generates around 30% of its electricity from hydropower. But with better water storage and management, this percentage could be significantly increased, leading to energy security and economic benefits. The consequences of inaction are severe. Without proper water management, sea intrusion will continue to erode fertile land, displace communities and disrupt ecosystems. The World Bank has warned that Pakistan could become a water-scarce country by 2025 if immediate steps are not taken to enhance water storage capacity. With climate change accelerating glacial melt and altering rainfall patterns, the need for proactive water management is greater than ever. Addressing the issue of sea intrusion is not about political rivalries, it is about Pakistan's survival. The Indus Delta is a national treasure that needs urgent protection. The focus should not be on debating the necessity of dams, but on determining how quickly and how efficiently they can be built. To safeguard its delta, economy and people, Pakistan must move beyond political disputes and take decisive action. Large storage dams are the key to regulating water flow, preventing sea intrusion and securing the country's future. The time to act is now. Stay tuned for more updates here on PolicyWire.